Hello. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. Good morning. Good, Good morning. afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, depending from where you are tuning in today, and on behalf of Mamlaka Brokers Network, officially we call it MBN. You are welcome. Today, we would like to welcome you to another edition of talk show Mamlaka Brokers Network, Etiquette, Wire Etiquette. On this panel today, we have outstanding, beautiful queen from all over the world who are joining on our stage today and who are going to address in wire etiquette. So sit down and relax. I hope that you also have a pen and a notebook where you're going to be taking a lot of note because you are going to be receiving a lot today to become the queen that you were born to be. Our panelists are Dr. Denele May, all the way from North Carolina, USA, Ambassador Anne Trujillo, all the way from Colorado, USA, and Ambassador Rene Johnson, all the way Hello. from Nassau, Bahamas. <laughs> you are welcome, beautiful queen, on the stage of Mamalaka Brokers Network today. So, Dr. Denele May, officially known as Dr. D is a powerhouse leader in the kingdom of God. Dr. Dene is the wife of Dr. Stacy Leme, a senior pastor and founder of Champion Kingdom Center, Charlotte, North Carolina, which is a ministry focused on four corner principle to teach, to train, to develop, and to develop men, women, and family into the agor ordained area of gifting and influence. Dr. Dene consider it an honor to work alongside women that find themselves stuck in areas such as uh, in area of their life to see they are lo they, they are them lose free and fulfilling the will of the king. Through her life weekly brokers, women that Win quarterly meeting, ladies' night out, women connection, girls' dreams, girls, kingdoms, women united conferences, developing queens mentorship program of her 101 and development section. And Dr. Dene is also an author of a book uh, called, uh, what's the title of your book again? It's Wire Etiquette. It's called Royalty in Pursuit royalty. of the Crown. Huh? Royalty, royalty. She is an author of a book called Royalty in Pursuit of a Crown. So please welcome Dr. Dene on the stage. <laughs> and <laughs> Hello. Our, next panelist, our next panelist is uh, uh, Ambassador Annette Trujillo. Uh, Annette Trujillo is the wife of Dr. Joseph Trujillo. They are founder of Elevation Dream Center in Westminster. Colorado. They have been married for 30 good years and have four children, Joshua, Dominic, Isaiah, and Amsty, and three granddaughter-in-law, Jessica, Alexis, and Amanda. Annette is a proud grandmother of eight ranch, uh, of eight and loves spending time with each one of them. She is a CEO and founder of the organization of Queen Statute which equips women around the world by teaching them their value and worth. In 2014, Annette was a recipient of the Golden Rule Award, and it also uh, affiliated with Women and Value Organization. She is an ordained minister under the covering of Dr. Pepe Ramna and Angela Ramna of MKCC. Welcome, welcome Ambassador Anne Trujillo on stage. And uh, our, our other panelist is Ambassador Rene Johnson, all the way from the Bahamas. Dr. Rene Johnson is a kingdom. Yeah, there. I told you that that was probably going to happen. Yeah. 
Please, can you mute your microphone, please? I'm Mistress? sorry. Dr. Rene Johnson is a kingdom citizen and Bahamian citizen. Dr. Rene Johnson has practiced cosmetology for 45 years. Sorry, Boo Thang. A you were just too smart for student. your own good. Please, can you mute your microphone? Dr. Rene Johnson is a kingdom citizen and a Bahamian citizen. Dr. Rene Johnson has practiced cos cosmetology for 45 years. A versatile businesswoman, she is a proud mentee of Dr. Miles Monroe and member and trustee of Atwala uh, Third World Leadership Association. Dr. Rene Johnson is a mother of a two beautiful young ladies and a grandmother of two. She is a mentor to many. Her motto is, if I can help someone along, like, uh, along the way, then my living will be not in vain. So to our audience, to our viewers out there, you are blessed today to have these three beautiful queens on the stage. And without a further ado, I would like to open the floor to them and please be the first to share. The floor is yours, beautiful queen. Okay. Will I be going first? Is that right? Go ahead, Mr. Nelson. Okay. <laughs> well, is, uh, first off, I want to say thank you so much to Ambassador Veronique, so much uh, for this opportunity to be here with you all today. It is absolutely the most power packed day. And I'm telling you, I uh, had the opportunity to listen in to last week or, well, whenever the last broadcast was regarding this subject matter and this topic. And I tell you, it was dynamic. You women did a phenomenal job in expressing and uh, conveying and sharing about royalty and about uh, queen living and women. It was just, it was so power packed. I'm telling you, I, I, I wish I could have been actually live with you there on that broadcast, but it was such a power packed uh, broadcast. And I hope that all of the, those who are listening today that they are ready to take uh, some very good notes because I believe today is gonna to be an overflow of that which was shared on the last broadcast. And so I kind of feel like the newbie coming in here since uh, you know, with uh, these two other beautiful queens that have already started forerunning this subject matter today, uh, I feel like I just need to sit back and listen, but I'm telling you, I'm just so excited about this topic. So Veronique, thank you again for bringing this to the forefront. Thank you for gathering us together. Thank you for calling the women together so that we can have an opportunity to not only say hi to each other here, but to say hello and welcome and greet all of the other queens that are gonna be united with us here. Uh, I believe this is a season and the time for kingdom queens to come and arise in the land. We must uh, awaken, we must shake, awake, and we must command them to arise because what's within each and every one of them is royalty. It's definitely that. Uh, but the, I think society and uh, some things of our backgrounds and teachings and, and mindsets and life experiences and dark places has caused so many to forfeit their queenly role and position. Because we have all, I think one, was, one of the statements that was stated last time was that uh, you are born into royalty, but you must be developed into being a queen. And I really believe queenship uh, comes from being trained and taught and mentored and developed. Uh, you know, we always love to use the book of Esther as the, as the backdrop and as the platform in which we stand upon to discuss and to talk about things of royalty, about behavior and, and about uh, the role and the position and the, and the power and the strength of being a queen in the land. But I know this is that uh, there is just so much I could say. I don't even know if I should be going on. I don't know how long I have, but because I, I wanna make sure everyone else comes in as well, but I, I'm just so full and, and flowing over with the with this topic because i really believe today 
and all that we see and all that we experience and all that's being said and done, uh, I, I really believe that the essence, the true essence of what a queen is and what royalty is in the life of, of the beautiful ones that God has created, these female beings, these uh, womb carriers, I like to call us. Uh, one of the things is that they have kind of pushed aside royalty. They love the title, but they do not like the king's law that allows us to reign as queens in the land. And whenever you throw off the king's law, I'm talking about the king of kings and the Lord of lords, when you throw off his rule and his reign and his, uh, and, and his law, then you are throwing and really forfeiting your position and your placement as a queen in the land. So, you know, one of the things that um, excites me when we talk about this, uh, I love being a, a mentor to women. And I love showing and demonstrating, but I also love teaching and bringing revelation because I believe a lot of times what's missing is the true understanding of the origin and the original in, uh, design and intent that God created for women, uh, for our purpose. Uh, and that before I was born again, I didn't walk in royalty. I didn't understand royalty. I didn't know royalty. But once I was born again into the kingdom of God, he said, you are royal. You are royalty. Now, let me show you how to walk, how to talk, how to dress, how to behave, how to respond, how to communicate. And not only for your benefit, but so that you can go out and get others. And I really believe that's a part of uh, the discussion I'm sure that we're going to be talking about today. Great, 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 great. That's awesome, Dr. Dene. Really, you have to be born into the kingdom to understand that you are truly royalty. That's so beautiful. So I will let someone chime in into that one. Oh, God. And for those of you who just join us today, we are talking about royal etiquette. Royal etiquette. What is royal etiquette? This is what we're discussing about today on this talk show. Thank you very much. You know, it's so funny because um, as as Miss Danae is speaking about all this, it, it's she's so similar to what I'm going to be addressing. But first of all, I want to thank every single one of you. Um, you um, have really, I'm so proud to be a part of the MBN network and to have um, Queen Vedonique with us and all of you amazing speakers. I am so grateful for this opportunity. And so I wanna thank you before we get started. But the funny thing is, is that Miss Queen Danae, she was speaking so much of what I already have. So I am going, I use a lot of analogies and I love object lessons. And last, last time I used a butterfly and um, yeah, there it is. <laughs> And so I am going to use flowers. And wait a minute, where's my where's my butterfly? <laughs> You're gonna get it, girl. You're gonna get it. All y'all are gonna get it. <laughs> so um, I'm using a flower analogy, and you're gonna see there's all different types. Some of them are bright, some of them are they're different sizes, some are wilted, they're dying. And and I did this because I wanted to talk a little bit about how a flower becomes a flower, right? And I want you to pay attention because this is going to speak to the queen in you, okay? So with this flower, the flower has three garments that it wears, three garments. And as a queen, we got to wear the three garments also. So our garments that God gives us is the garment, the first garment is righteousness. The next garment is praise. And the third garment is our tunic of authority. So I want you to pay attention to those. Now the flower has three garments also. It comes in three different things. We have, we have the, the petals, we have where it pollinates from, and we have the stem. Now, I want you to pay attention to this because with these three, with these flowers, they don't compete. They don't complete. Before they were a flower, they were a seed, right? And the seed had to be properly put in the right atmosphere for it to develop into the flower that it needed to become, 
Now the Holy Spirit came and, and, and he watered the flower. He watered the seed. He watered it. And then it produced beautiful, beautiful rays of color and beautiful sizes and beautiful scents. And it produced everything inside of it. Now, the flower never sits back and competes with another flower. We have a, we have a sunflower who never complete, competes with the daisy. And we have a rose that never has to compete because they all know their own position. Now, before they can do anything at all as a queen, we got to understand that before we can wear a crown properly, we have to understand who we are in God. We have to understand before you can wear a crown, just like their crown is their petals, before we can wear a crown, we got to properly understand that we are priests first. So we got to line up with the law of God, right? You have to wear, you have to wear a crown. Yes, we wear our crown and everybody wants to be in pursuit of the crown and everybody wants to put on the crown first, but there's a process. And I want you all to say process. There is a process. And sometimes we want the crown without the process. Sometimes we want to put on the crown, but we don't understand that you've got to wear righteousness first you got to be the priest of your own life and you got to line up with the laws. Sometimes queens are saying, I'm a queen and they don't understand the word queen and they're living outside of what a true queen really is, right? I love when I go into, because what we're called to do, my husband and I, we go into areas that a lot of people don't feel real comfortable in. We go into areas where, you know, where it's poverty stricken and we're teaching these beautiful women who have so much inside of them who are trying to hustle in life to make money to provide for their children and they don't understand their worth and their value. They don't understand it. So they get stuck in a position of where they were planted in, right? They get stuck. Now, this is what God does. When we remove ourselves out of an environment too soon, we find ourselves wilted. We start dying because the God isn't there to properly nourish us. He's not there to help us. He's not there to make us help us grow. And so we end up like this rose. Just it's, it's, it's beautiful still. It smells wonderful, but it starts dying because it doesn't have the proper nourishment. So when we see as women, women that are coming in and they're wearing a crown and they don't understand, they don't understand the process of being cultivated and being pruned. We have to be pruned and things in our past have to be cut off and things have to be cut so that way we can start blooming again. So I think that sometimes as queens, we rush a process. We rush into a process of believing that, that we have to wear a crown first, but there's a process with wearing the tunics first, wearing the robes first. See, even Queen Esther understood that. She went through the process, a 12-month process of wearing, putting, learning how to wear her, her, her clothing the right way, right? She, had, she understood she had to wear a robe of righteousness. She had to wear a robe to praise. She had to wear the tunic of authority and understand her authority. Now, when we as queens don't understand our authority, we become villains in the kingdom. And we start trying to compete with other flowers for a, for a position. See, in the kingdom, we don't have to position ourselves to try to be the villain. We all are, are called to do something unique. We are all called to do something wonderful. And we are all called to, to shine. Every one of us should be shining in the area that we're called to and not compete with other queens. I love that I have you girls on this panel because, um, you know, I look at you guys and I'm like, oh my goodness, when you celebrate, I celebrate. When you guys are succeeding, I'm succeeding. When you guys are you doing wonderful things, I'm doing wonderful things because I get to celebrate in what you are doing. And in the kingdom of God, that's how God wants us to, to be. He wants us, he wants us to not compete, but to celebrate, but to understand that there is a process. And this process comes by seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So we cannot just wear a crown and proclaim to be a queen. We have to go through the process of eliminating things and cutting things off of our past. 
and, and planting ourselves in the right environment, in the right atmosphere, so that way we can start to grow and we can start becoming these beautiful, radiant flowers that God has created us to be. So I want to just um, share a little bit with on this really quickly. I want you to understand that righteousness is being in right standing with God. We need to maintain our righteousness by obeying the king. We have to understand that power and, thor and authority must be used together and it cannot be separated. So power and authority must be used together and it cannot be separated. We cannot negate righteousness without queenship. It just won't work. So we have to remember as queens, we got to set a standard and how we speak, how we address people, how we look. We, there's so much more, right? When um, my daughter was little, she, um, we had got her into some, a little bit of pageants, right? And they taught her how to walk properly. They taught her how to speak. They taught, taught her how to, how to have poise and how to stand correctly, how to wave correctly, you know, how to sit at a table correctly, how to use the proper utensils, you know? And these are things as a queen that we got to get back to teaching these principles to the women out there because they are wearing a, a, a crown that is tarnished because they don't understand the process. And so I wanna leave that with you today, ladies. I want you to understand that in everything that we do, there is a process. Um, we, I, I'm gonna leave seven keys with you. The first key is watch what we say. Make every word that comes out of your mouth to uplift other queens. Watch what you say. We're not here to gossip. We're not here to put other people down. We're here to watch what we say. The second thing is keep your emotions under control. When your emotions are all over the place and we can't control them, then we start bringing down other women around us. We start tearing down the environments around us and we start causing some chaos. And we know as women, we have mouths, right? <laughs> Boy, before I was in the kingdom, I had, a, I had a mouth on me, you know? I grew up in the hood, so. <laughs> I knew how to fight and fight for everything I wanted, right? And so I was taught, you know, my dad had me like I was a tomboy. I was out there doing, fighting like the boys, right? But I had to learn. That's not how God created me to be. He didn't want me to be out there flapping my gums. I, like I say, you know, he wanted me to understand who I was and how he, he properly made me to be. So we got to watch what we say. The third thing is surround yourself around others that will help you grow. Where you are planted, stay there. Allow it your growth process. Sometimes we pull out of the place where we're at because we're like, it's just not feeding me. Things aren't going right. And we per prematurely pull ourselves out of areas that we should not be pulled out of yet. And then our purpose, we're like, what's going on? We're confused about it. It's because the confusion in the place we were supposed to be, we don't understand we needed to stay there a little bit longer to grow and to become the beautiful plant that God created us. Amen. The fourth thing is exert good character. Good character is vital. You have to have good character wherever you go. When you say something, be a man or a woman of your word, I always say, you know, we got to be responsible for what we say and how we do it. People should come to us so we could give proper advice on things because of our character standing. People will watch you all over. Matter of fact, I had a young lady who wrote in um, last Wednesday when we were doing a Bible study and she said, I don't know if you remember me, Annette, but I was, I went to middle school with you. And I was like, no, you know, I, it was awesome. But she, you know, she said, I've been watching you guys for a long time and you didn't know this. And it put a check in my spirit. Am I living a life that, that when people are watching from a distance, that they're able to say, wow, you know, look where she's at. Or am I living a life that is not lining up with what God created me to be? And so we got to make sure that we're always in right standing, right? We got to always make sure because people are watching. I always tell my kids, people watch you. 
you know, you're in a fishbowl. Everybody's watching you and they're waiting for you to mess up. So you better make sure that you're in right standing, right? Because they'll pick your flaws out. The fifth one is be a law abiding citizen. And everything that we do, we got to be a law abiding citizen. You know, we try, you know, well, you know, back when, when I was in, you know, living in, in my past, <laughs> I did some things that I shouldn't have done. I stole a car, <laughs> right? Just because, <laughs> because I thought, you know, um, it, it's just fun, right? No, it wasn't. It was the dumbest thing I ever did. But, you know, things that, that we do, right? We got to remember, like, we, gotta, we got to be law-abiding citizens. We want people to look at us and say, wow, look at the character of God in them. Look at what they're doing. They're law-abiding citizens. The sixth one is never just think of yourself. Never just think of yourself. Ladies, we got to be there for each other. We got to uplift each other. We got to love one another and always be there to be a helping hand. Be a helping hand to everybody around you, right? It's always better to give then receive. It's so good to give. And number seven, and the most important thing is seek first the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom with everything that you have. Seek first the kingdom and understand that you cannot properly wear a crown until you are all those things. You have to be a law abiding citizen first. You have to live in the righteousness of the king. You have to be a priest of your own home as well. And ladies, we got to put this stuff together. So remember, we do not have to fight for position in the kingdom. We all have something precious to do. That's our purpose. And we got to shine like these flowers in wherever we're at. We got to know that we don't have to try to outdo one another. Each of us are unique and beautiful in our own way. Amen. Thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Wow. It's just getting more, I mean, it's just getting more excited. <laughs> yes. Very much, very much. I'm so glad. I'm delighted to have all those seven keys. And I know that uh, many queens have taken note of those seven keys. Really. Great, 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 great. I will let the floor now to Ambassador Rene before we, we have a short break of art. Okay, thank you so much. And I must say so far, the panel has been extremely, I mean, knowledgeable in the topic, as well as most of the times we would have lived and experienced a lot of the things that we're talking about. And as I listened to everybody's bio, I realized that we all had something unique and different. And that, that, that is what it is. That is what it's all about. So, what happens, we're never the same mold. We're never, there were never two set of the same fingerprints. You care about triplets and quadruplets and none of those kids would have the same fingerprint. But one thing that is true and is sound is that the word of God never changes. And as I spoke and I thought about royalty as we, as I was, this is the second phase. I start thinking about um, what, image we were born in and we were all born in the likeness and the image of Yeshua we were born in his image and his likeness so it's like when your parents have kids there's always a parent who says oh he looks like me oh no he looks like me or he has something from me or you hear on the talk shows um the various ones there's some controversy I'm not the baby's father. So when I think about that, there, there's no doubt, undeniably, no doubt, who, baby, I, who is my father? And, and he is the one who created me. And of course, I have an earthly father and I have an earthly mother. But thinking about royalty and thinking about the image and the likeness that we were born in, undeniably, the greatest person, like I said, that exists he still exists today and there are some simple requirements for us to be royal i mean simple and and some of the things as and when we would have expressed our will to be in the kingdom of being in a kingdom ambassador then the expression of agape love and faith and patience 
These are things that we must express across ethnic, cultural, socioeconomic, national, generational, gender, and denominational lines. Sometimes we find ourselves in a situation where some persons may have acquired things and they automatically assume that because they acquired something, I'm better off, I'm better done, or I am better because. And I think growing up, not I think, growing up, I went to church. I started off in a Catholic church. Then I went to a Pentecostal church. And then I went to a non-denominational non church. And one of the things that I, I constantly think about is there are differences in characteristics of persons. We are different. And, but in the kingdom, we all have access. We all have access to the things that require us, that's required to cause us to be the same. Because we were all born with this innate ability. We were all born again in his likeness. So, but these are things we must seek. And the only way we can seek and to understand what royalty is, is to go into the word, go into our constitution. And when we go into the word, there are times when I was speaking to my daughter this morning, and we were talking about, we were sharing on situations and life and how we allow or find ourselves being subjected in situations where because we didn't make right decisions and, and Annette, um, Joe, um, Annette spoke about it earlier. We, we, she talked about process. We, we don't allow the process to continue. And, and so we skip from page one to the middle of the book to almost to the conclusion. And so we were, we were talking about and sharing about some challenges she had, some challenges I had, and I constantly tried to explain to her the importance of understanding who she is, understanding the importance of her value, understanding that when you don't allow process to complete itself, then you make decisions that could deplete yourself. And so we have to constantly find ourselves understanding the importance of, of who we are. And then when I thought about we were born into this world, of course, the cosmos, they're different worlds. And if you don't understand that, you would tend to continue thinking that the world of finances, the world of, of anything that is derived from your hard work would be something that you should subject yourself to. So if, you, if you're in a relationship as a queen, you may decide like, okay, that's my husband and I am supposed to listen and he is my head and I am subjected to being subordinate and I'm supposed to be all of that. But then what about if he is not doing what he ought to do? Does that make you um, somebody who is not good enough? But if we don't allow process to continue with us, then we would feel like we're not good enough because we made mistakes. And so the whole idea, as we spoke of, what we spoke to this morning, I was saying to her, listen, there are some times when you would have made a mistake, but you don't have to stay there. You were born to lead. There was no, no way in the Bible. If somebody could show me in the Bible where it says that I was born to be dominated, or I was born to be ruled, then, then I understand that. But if, if it's not saying that what it said is this, what is dominion? We were born to dominate. We were born to dominate the earth, but we were not born to dominate each other. So if you're finding yourself queens in situations where you feel less than who you are supposed to be, you, 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 you feel unworthy, you feel left out, you feel subjugated to, and this, the feeling like you're, you don't belong, you don't fit in. You don't have to fit in. You don't have to fit in. That there are some things that you can do because let me tell you what dominion means. It means to govern or to control. It means to rule or to master something. It means to master something and it, and it means to have rulership. It means to lead. So you are to lead in your area of gifting. And and, and, and I, as I listen to Danae and, and to... Um, 
on it, that is what we are all doing. We are leading in our area of gifting. We're not competing. We're not trying to sit down and decide, okay, well, Annette said she's married. Listen, I'm a proud single woman. I said it. But do I want to be single forever? I think not. But as, and the reason and why I'm single at this time, then I am still using this time to perfect some things that needs to be perfected. So that when my husband or when a proposal come along, I'm in position. And so this is what we have to do as queens. We need to always remain in position, but we, and, and they said it earlier, we have to always be trainable. Um, we need mentorship. We need to be align uh, ourselves with the word. And in aligning yourself with the word, there are times when you will constantly, you will still make mistakes. Are you then eliminated from the process of being a kingdom citizen? No, go back, repent, change. It, repent just means to change your actions, change the way you do things, change the way you, you respond. You know, we are otherwise taught most of the time to be sheep. We, we, we think that we're less than, we think that we go to church and we wanna hear truths and we, we wanna be led, yes, and that's okay. But you were born a lioness. You were born to lead. You were born to leave and deposit something on this earth. You were born to make a difference. And so there is no reason to feel, you know, when I was growing up, I kid you not, I was called big teeth and I love my teeth now because I have a beautiful smile. I was called ugly, I was called skinny. And you know, I remember a few years ago, I was working a pageant in, in the Bahamas. We had a uh, USA teen pageant used to come in. I worked the pageant for years. And I remember I was going over with my friends and they were all of uh, Caucasian descent. And this guy saw me and he says, I know your face from somewhere. And I says, oh, okay. And he began to say negative things about me and to me. And this thing just came up in me and I had to control myself. And I had to say to him, listen, if you think by saying mean things to me that that's going to cause me to forget who I am and whose I am, if you didn't catch me in school, because this was something he's saying that, oh, in school, if I knew you, if I didn't know you, that means you weren't pretty. Really? Pretty? So what I'm saying to the young ladies out there, so what if they call you ugly? So what if they call you names? So what if they said your hair is picky? Listen, plenty weave out there. You could fix that. There's makeup out there. You can add. There are things that is so superficial that it will cause you your mental state if you allow the things of the world or what people say to you to cause you to feel or make decisions just because you want to fit in. Mm -hmm. I'm saying to you today, you are unique. Mm -hmm. There's only one of you. Your royal status was from the day you were born. And yes, if I see Eve and Adam, trust me, I'm going to ask God just to let me have a good conversation first. Because we, we were literally positioned already. And then here comes the slime of the earth, the prince of darkness, to create. And he still does that today. And, and that's what we have to be aware of. He has a way of getting into your mind and creating doubts and fear. And, and then he causes you to feel like, OK, I'm not worthy. But I'm telling you, you are worthy. It doesn't matter what, matter what man say. It doesn't matter what anyone say. It only matters what God says about you. And he said, you are royalty. And so I just want to encourage everybody out there that when you find yourself becoming disenfranchised with yourself, take a moment and remember whose you are. Amen. 
Awesome, 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 awesome. Take a moment and remember who you are. Yes. You are worthy. Yes. I love that. And you were born to lead. Yes. I love it. I love it. So we're going to just take a short minute of art. But before we go to that art, I would like for us to see how the audience is doing. I'm pretty sure they are so blessed to have these three dynamic queens coming all the way from the kingdom of God to just share a little bit of what you really are. So stay tuned. Thank you very much. Let's go to the app. chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and kingdom ambassador. Llamados a demostrar su excelencia en este mundo, tenemos una misión con un mandato. Mit unerschütterlicher Ruhe und Geduld y mit eine Welt voll von Sicherheit. Bleibt unser höchstes Ziel, unser König mit großer Vorgrifflichkeit zu vertreten. And making this world that better place to live. Say we're born in Jesus, but we still fight our most Christians. But MBN is our mission to spread love and show you vision. And we cancel our division. And we hope that you listen. Cause mom lock up buck us now. We're busy love and joy and love and joy. We cancel out the noise and we give in you a voice. Give you love and joy and love and joy. We cancel out the noise. Awesome, 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 awesome. We cast love and we bring you joy. That is who we are, Mamlaka Broadcast Network. <laughs> I love that ad. We are talking about royal etiquette. And as thus so far, you have listened to these three dynamic queens all the way from the kingdom of God to share with you what you ought to do or how you ought to become. What is royal etiquette? Somebody may ask, what is really royal etiquette? What are you talking about? Royal is an adjective, a having the statue of a king or a queen or a member of their family. As a noun, it's a member of a royal family. And etiquette is the conduct or procedure required by good reading or prescribed by authority to be observed in social or Office, official life. So you have heard what Dr. Dene Leme has spoken. You have heard what Ambassador Rene Johnson and Ambassador jo uh, uh, um, Annette uh, Trujillo have spoken. You are a royal. You are a queen. You were born to lead, but you must become the leader. You must become that queen. So if somebody may ask you, Dr. Dene or Ambassador Rene Johnson, Ambassador Anna Trujillo, how can I become that beautiful queen, even though that you have so well thought that we have to go through a process 
uh, we need to know who we are. And, but I'm kind of lost. What should I do? I think you have to find your true authentic self. Mm -hmm. You gotta be authentic, right? You gotta know that no matter where you come from, right? Um, and no matter, you know, who you are, you got to know and find your true authenticity, authenticity inside of you. You got to be authentic, learn to, you know, love you, you got to love you, you got to really, you know, not try to become something or someone else, like find all those great qualities that God placed in you, and mm -hmm. really bring those forth, right? Really love you. I think that that's the biggest issue with a lot of women. They don't know their purpose or or their their worth or their value because they truly don't know their themselves. And so it's being authentic, you know. Yes. Don't be ashamed of where you've come from. Don't be ashamed of of your family and your background. But use those, use those, use those things so that way you can become everything that you were supposed to. God didn't make a mistake. Wherever you came from, he didn't make a mistake, right? You know, I, I, I'm from Colorado, yes, um, but my family in, in, is from New Mexico. And so I can speak Spanish. I speak Spanglish, I should say. I can mix my words come, you know, we do it all the time at home. I'll mix everything up, you know, but, you know, in, in where my family's from, it's a little, little tiny rural area, right? Um, majority of the people there, they, you know, they, they live in, in double wide trailers and stuff, right? If I was ashamed of who I am and where I came from, then I could never be my true authentic self. I got to become and use all those things that God brought me into so that way I could bloom and become what he's created me to be. So I think that people forget who, how to be themselves. They're, they're ashamed of backgrounds or things that happen to them or, you know, it, you know, the enemy uses that like, you know, don't let them know who you truly are, you know, cause then they're not going to, they're not going to want you around. They're not going to, they're going to look at you differently. You know, if they find out that you didn't, you know, you didn't come from, from, you know, having a silver spoon in your mouth, how are they going to look at you? And I think that God, God places us in, in places for, to position us. I'm going to say that again, God places us in positions, you know, um, to position us. And, and it's our way of reaching people that, that only we could do. Right. And that's why I said, be authentic and don't worry about other people and what they're, what, you know, what they're doing. We should all come together using our gifts and our talents and just shine where we're at. And so I would tell the next generation, or I tell young girls that I mentor all the time, be authentic, you know, you know, what are, you know, where you came from, don't be so eager to, to hide it, but use it as a stepping stone. So that way you could become everything that God created you to be. That's, that's great. That's so, that's so true. Can someone chime in? I, yes. But I, oh, go right ahead. Sorry. <laughs> what I, what I would like to say is, um, I agree with, uh, Arnett. And um, one of the things we have to always remember, he gave us free will. And that, that means we have an opportunity to make choices. But the only way we can make informed decisions if we have information. And again, we go back to the constitution and go back to our constitution, which is the word of God. And, and in there is all the information out. I agree. I always hear, sometimes I hear young people say, well, it's my life. And, and, and you would say as a mature person, well, I, the experience is best teacher, right? But I believe that somebody else's experience should be what I learned from. But most times the younger generation would say, well, I have experienced it for myself. And we're saying, no, you don't. There's something called choice. And then there's something sometimes when we choose to be a particular way, we have to recognize also that that is when you have to be prepared to suffer the consequences of your choice. So, and you, was, you were talking early, earlier about what royalty is, and these are the, some of the words. I think this, this sounds so good to me. And so I want to be like this. It says words like eminence, your eminence, you know, uh, the crown, majesty, 
queenship. And of course, kingship and kingdom, because we know we have kingdom, citizens, kings. Um, but what I what also too is, when we have these things, we have to have charisma. We want to have confidence. We, we want to have love. We speak eloquently, yes. But not being able to speak the queen's language doesn't mean that you are less than. Again, process. You want to apply and put yourself into in a position to be understood. I remember, and I shared on the last uh, royal sharing was, I had a mouth. Trust me. Very colorful. Every three words was a colorful expression. <laughs> and eventually I got into Toastmasters, which really assisted me. But again, these are called choice choices. And then looking at uh, Arnett, who's in pageantry and all of that, yes, I've never been in a pageant, but I've been through pageants and I've assisted persons in pageants. But one of the things I, I want to say to persons out there, yes, you have the right and you are, a, you are royalty and you are a queen and you are a king. And when you go into the pageants, which is an excellent thing, I think it, it allows women to really express themselves and to, to show the world that I'm more than just this. I'm, I'm, I have something up here as well. But one of the things that came to me was this, and then this is what I felt like it was a download. And I said, I wanna share it. A title from a pageant is for a year. A title in a pageant is for but a year. But the royal title is a lifetime and it's a lifestyle. So even though we may be positioned to go in pageants that is earthly and it's another cosmos, but we have to recognize that that is temporary. But the royalty that we, the status that we are talking about is a royal priesthood. And in Revelations 5 and 10, it says, and you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. And that's where dominance come in again. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Please go ahead, Dr. Denny. Yeah, both of those were just absolutely fantastic responses and great counsel, great uh, wisdom in both of those. So thank you too so very much for what you've shared. You kind of set me into something, and I have to say this, uh, I've omitted to share a little bit about my testimony and a little bit about my story. Uh, and I think this will answer the question, uh, Queen Veronique, exactly as to what you were saying. Uh, and I'm going to make this as short as I possibly can. I grew up in a, in a home, in a family that had a mother and a father. Uh, I have one sibling, and she's uh, 11 years younger than I am. I always say I am the youngest one, but she is a little younger than I. <laughs> and growing up in our home, uh, it was traditional in the sense that it had a mother and a father and there were children, but it was unconditional. Uh, it was untraditional in this sense. And that was that my father was very uh, distant from the family. He was not a, a active part of the family. My husband, my father, was not the husband that I have today that I see demonstrated in our home. And so because of that, there was a lot of missing places in my life. There was a lot of gaps and a lot of holes and there was a lot mm -hmm. of insecurities. There was a lot of situations and places where it, it put me in a position where I felt like I had no voice, I had no worth, I had no value because of the absence. Though my father was there, I had no one that uh, communicated with me. If I could just share a little bit here, uh, in, my, in, in our home, my father would come home and he would not even speak to me. He would walk past me, say hello to my sister and wouldn't even say hello to me. So this wasn't one time, this wasn't you know a few times, this was the consistency. I never even had to call him dad. He was my father, there wasn't, a, wasn't another, but this was the individual, uh, this was his behavior, this was his characteristic. Uh, my father would never spend time with me. The only time I spent any time with him 
was when it was time for discipline. When it was time to get a spanking, then he was mm-hmm. present. And so because of that, like I said, that, that really put me in a very uh, rejected a spirit of rejection. And so growing up, there were so many holes and gaps. Uh, but my mother was a woman of God. She was a woman of prayer. She was a woman of intercession. She was a woman of the word. And because of that, uh, and her gentle demeanor, her loving demeanor, uh, it, it helped me through those years. But my mother was very busy. She was an educator. So she was very busy working, uh, you know, teaching. And then when she would come home, she also taught uh, night school for adult education. And at the same time, we were helping my grandmother, who my grandfather had uh, developed Alzheimer's. And at that time, it was a constant need, you know, to take care of him. So myself and my mom became, and my sister became, you know, along with my grandmother, the primary caregivers for him. Um, so through that process, it was, uh, it, it, I, I had no identity. Let's just say that way. I, I really did not know who I was. I was just in the situation. I, I was there, but I was really, I just kind of felt isolated and alone. So I came home uh, years later, I went to college and was coming home one weekend myself and another young lady that lived in our community. And I came home, uh, dropped her off. I went to our house and my mother was on the phone, which was not uncommon because she was always on the phone praying with someone, speaking with someone or mentoring with someone. And I said, mom, I really need to talk to you about something. And she said, I'll be off in just a minute. And so I went out and said hello to my grandmother and, you know, my sister, my grandfather at this time had already transitioned. And so um, I came back in a few minutes and I said, mom, I really, really got to talk to you. And she said, I promise you, I'll be off in just a minute. She says, I'm almost finished. She said, "Um, if you could just give me a few more minutes. And I said, okay, I know what I'll do. I'll drop something off to the young lady. She left her bag in my car. And I said, I'll go and drop that off and I'll come back. And then by that time, maybe you'll be finished. So our community, it was, it's a small little country town in the beautiful little uh, city area, outskirts area of Gainesville, Florida. And I was driving and dropping the bag off and I spoke with her and then, you know, maybe about 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes passed. And I was, as I was driving back, all I could see were lights. It was police lights, it was ambulance, and it was the paramedics. And when I pulled up into our driveway, uh, neighbors had already be- had already started coming out. This was in the evening, and uh, they were already over at the home. And all I heard was screaming. So I went in the house, ran back to my mother's room, and I found saw my mother along with a police officer uh, that was standing there, and the paramedics that were trying to come down the hallway. And she was lying there in a pool of blood. She had been shot in the head. Um, long to make a very long story short, uh, my father was the one. My mother and father were separated at this time, and uh, because of that situation, um, I had the opportunity. And I will say this, and it may sound a little strange, but I had the privilege of being able to see my mother transition from this side of life into the next. And uh, there was a moment when I was standing, uh, I think I had about five minutes to 10 minutes that I got to see her still alive. And as they were trying to work on her and trying to revive her and saying, hey, just hold on, we're gonna get you to the hospital. My mother, with all the strength that she had, she was lying there in a pool of blood. And I, she just politely, as gently as she could, she turned her head and she looked at me and just uh, just a little bit, I could see her eyes and then she turned back. And then it was almost as if she was saying to me, I'm passing this on. Everything that I've taught you, everything that I have, you may not even understand it all at this moment. I know this is confusing and hard and this is very difficult, but I'm passing something on to you. And as she did within a couple of moments, her body lifted up and the biggest smile came across her face and she, her body gently rested on the, on the floor. That was the beginning of my process. And I say all that to say this, many times we don't understand how can we become that queen or how can we walk after we've gone through such hardships or difficult places and things in our life. This was my launching pad to begin the process. 
And this is something that I write about in the book. And I said, I had to pursue the one she taught about in order to become the one that she talked about. And so that was something that was so dear to my heart was to begin the process of learning. Who am I? Why am I here? And what is my purpose in this earth? Because I know that there has to be a purpose. I know I'm not here just, you know, just to eat, just to sleep, just to work, just to go home and then to start it all over again. And so I, and I began to do this. This is how the process of becoming a queen uh, began for me. I had to give up who I was in order to become the one that I was truly destined to be. I had to give that girl up. I had to tell the the nay that everyone knew that uh, you know was known. Uh, everything that had taken place, I had to pass that on because, as you can probably imagine, there was a myriad of different things that took place afterwards. Uh, my mother was so well known and so well loved. I mean, it, it was just it was a lot that was put upon my shoulders because now I was the one who had to give uh, the care to my sister who was eleven. I had to still care for my grandmother who, um, because of the way that my grandfather uh, cared for her, which was wonderful. Uh, she never knew how to drive. She never knew how to take care of her own you know, personal bills and so forth. So I, at my senior year in college, I would drive home on a Friday evening. I was able to talk with my professors and they worked this out for me for one year. And I would drive home every Friday and I would uh, and I would leave early, excuse me, every Thursday evening and I would drive home. It's a three hour drive and I would come and I would get up early Friday morning, get everyone to their medical appointments, get everyone to the bank, take care of whatever needed to be taken care of, start cleaning the house, washing clothes, ironing things, putting things away for my sister to have for the week, doing her hair. I mean, you name it, going grocery shopping, all of these things were done and I would stay every weekend and try to write my dissertations and all of these other things. And then I would leave at three o'clock in the morning to drive back to school to be there through the week. And I found a community, uh, someone in the community to help out during the weekdays. And I did this for a year and I'm 21 years of age and I had no idea what am I going to do. But I learned something about royalty. I learned something about royal etiquette. Um, through those times and that royalty actually has requirements attached to it. And sometimes we don't like the way that God's or the process that God gives us. But one thing about the king is that the king knows exactly the way in which we are to go because the end result that he is looking for is going to be beautiful. It is going to be exactly the way that he has uh, ascribed for it to be. And some of the things that, you know, I love about the story of Esther, because it, it kind of relates to me, is that this young lady, she was an orphan. She had no mother and father. At this time in my life, I'm 21. I may be, you know, older than what Esther was at that time, but I still felt like an orphan. I didn't have a mother. I didn't have a father. We didn't have, I didn't have aunt, aunts or uncles. I had no one to go to, had no one to really get counsel from. Uh, not even the, uh, the, the, the leaders that we had in our life at that time were just not equipped to handle and to give counsel, wise counsel as to what to do. And one of the things that I love about the story of Esther is, like I said, there's so many similarities. She was an orphan. She was one that, you know, may not have known, you know, what her purpose was. She was raised by a single male in her life. You know, she did not have all of the trainings and the teachings like so many of the other young ladies did probably at her time. But these are some of the qualities as I was reading in Esther, and I'll be really quick clear, uh, uh, in Esther chapter two. And that was this. The, the scriptures talk about in Esther uh, chapter two in verse seven, and it says this. It talks about how she was lovely, Esther, and she was beautiful. Those two connotations say this, one was for the outer appearance, but the other was of her nature and her character of who she was. It was the essence of what she walked in. Whenever she was around you, you felt one of those two attributes coming from Esther. And this is in Esther two and seven. These are the qualities 
you know, that, uh, that God used within Esther. Then it talks about, uh, let me see how I can say this because I, I, I wanna get through this quickly. But she was, let me say this, she was lovely, she was beautiful. Then the next phase that we see in Esther's life is that Esther received great favor. This is the next part. And this is in uh, Esther chapter two, verses eight and nine. And it talks about the favor that she won with the eunuch. It talks about the favor that when she got there, that every, she had favor with everyone in the palace. She had so much favor that the eunuch made sure that she was in the head of the line, that she received the treatments first, that she had the best placement in the harem. It was Esther had great favor. Then the next part of her was for Esther was her process. This is where she spent the year in going through process. And I believe uh, when it talks about the oil, it talks about the fragrances, it talks about the things that, that she was, um, the, the parts of the process that she had to go through. I believe in some ways, just like me, I had to go through a process of getting the junk and the hurt and the baggage and the ugly out of me, get the attitudes, get the, um, the, the, the rejection and all of these things that were surrounding and holding me hostage. And I had to go through a purification process. And through the process, it has started to develop the next part. And that was, her next part was wisdom. The next thing that you see with Esther is that when she was first titled as lovely and beautiful, then she went into great favor. The next thing Esther did was she went into, pro, uh, she went to process. And now after process, she began to have and walk in great wisdom because it says when she had her opportunity to go before the king, instead of her saying, I know it all, I got this, I understand, you know, they've been giving me a lot of favor. I know I'm probably going to be chosen. I don't need any help or any input. She, this is what the Bible says. It says that she asked the hair, she asked the eunuch, she asked him, what would it what would be the best thing for her to take in with her to the king? What would please the king? And that is what she took. She asked for wisdom. She did not assume she knew it all, but she asked for it. And then after wisdom, and that's in uh, chapter two and verse 15, is that it put her in placement to be in the position. Because after she had her one night with the king, with the item that she brought in from the council of the eunuch, it says that the king favored her amongst all the others. And I really believe that when we, uh, when we walk in that place of understanding our position and who we are, and as uh, Renee, Queen Renee and Queen Annette has already stated, is that you've got to know your worth. You must understand your value. And that no matter where you have been in this journey and in this walk, you are royalty. Now, yes, there are requirements to royalty. We, royalty has to be trained. Royalty must be developed. Royalty must have the right attitude and the right character. Royalty must have the right behavior. Royalty requires change. And royalty requires right thinking. And when all of these things are evident together, you're going to see the beautiful queen uh, that, that has emerged from that cocoon, that butterfly cocoon. And it is going to be just so beautiful. And your gifts and your talents and your call and your assignment is going to be electrified because of this very thing. So I just wanted to share that with you all. And I pray that that has answered, you know, a little bit of that question. Thank you very much for that sharing, beautiful Dr. Dene. And I'm pretty sure that your testimony has actually pulled an oil to many people because many queen out there, they they have a uh, uh, so-called uh, uh, the low self-esteem because of their past, because of what they went through, or because of what they're still even going through. So they don't even see that they are, they, they are qualified or they don't even see that they could even be able 
to be the queen that God has called them to be. But listening to you and all that has occurred in your life while you were still just a teenager, if I may so say, and see how beautiful you are walking in that dominion mandate today, the queen that you are, it gave a signal to the people out there for every queen and every king is out there that yes, if she has gone through, that means that I could also do it because God has called all of us into that dominion. God has called all of us into that leadership. God has called all of us as a queen and as a king. And we need to become, no matter whatsoever situation or trouble or whatever may come, we may lose parents, we may be uh, a, a living in the jungle, we may be uh, living somewhere. Our physical location does not determine the wealth that is invested in us. I will repeat it again. Our physical location or how we were raised up does not determine the wealth, the treasure that is invested in each one of us. So if you dare to believe God, the creator, who has called you, that he could cause you to walk through that process, then you will become the queen that you were born to become and that you will become the king that you were born to become. So I don't know whether any one of you may have any uh, final remarks before we wrap up uh, this beautiful talk show today, Royal uh, Queen Etiquette, which maybe we're gonna have again another third one <laughs> because there's a lot to say about it. The floor is yours for uh, last input. I would just like to add, and, and thank you for sharing your story, Dr. Lene. Um, it shed light on a lot, for lots of other persons who may have experienced what you experienced, and, and somebody needed to hear that. Mm -hmm. And so what I'd like to add, though, as, as royal, uh, being royal, we, we must remember that our God resists the proud, and he gives grace to the humble. Surely pride goes before destruction and a high mind before a fall. So we, we cannot have any form of hypocrisy in our speech and action. We must have pure hearts. We must be gentle and kind and most of all have love. The truth must be in us because only the truth will set us free. It must not only be in words, but in deeds and in truth. We must bear the weakness of our fellow brethren and bear each other's burdens. I bear your burden for your past. Being royal, being royal, comes with many obligations, as we said earlier, and commitments. We are constantly on stage. Someone is always watching, watching. We are the sum total of our actions and our attitudes, but most of all, our lifestyle. I'll end right there. Awesome. That's a beautiful. <laughs> Queen Annette, final remark. <laughs> wow. You know, I, I love hearing, you know, just everybody's, you know, what God has shared with them. Um, and um, Danae, your testimony is fabulous. And wow, you know, um, I, I always laugh because my daughter looks at you and she's always says, she always brings up, Queen Donate all the time, and um, she honors you so much. And um, you are somebody that that stands out. And your story, your story, is phenomenal. I mean, all of our stories are phenomenal, right? We all have come, you know, from that. And um, I salute you because my father passed away just. Um, two years ago from, from Alzheimer's and, and um, I take on that role of caregiver for him and, and now I'm taking care of my mother full time. So, you know, there's all these things, but to do it at such a vital age, you know, at 21 years old. Wow. I, you know, that was, that was such a, a, I couldn't even fathom everything that you've been through, but I want you to know that your life, um, is is so enriched 
and so blessed because of the process that you went through. Now, to become that queen, there is that process, right? We've all learned throughout everybody speaking the process of a queen. There is a process. And sometimes we don't understand the process from beginning to end. You know, we're like, we're going through things, just like Queen Danae was saying. She was, she was going through things. There was so much that was taking place in her life, right? We don't understand. We're like, where are we headed with this? Why is this happening? Why is all this stuff going on? But God always has a plan, right? And, and through her life circumstance and through your life circumstance and through all, my life circumstance, we can come together as, as queens, right? And share our, our, our testimony, share our lives with the community of women that are waiting, waiting for somebody to, to say, you can get through it because of this. You can make it because of what I've been through and sharing that. And I think that as if we can leave anything for any of the, the women listening is be that support, you know, be that support, be that person that's there to help another sister um, grow, pull them up. You know, we, there's so much going on in this world with people hurting each other and, and just trying to destroy somebody and with words and all this ugliness that we see, but we can change an environment by what we're doing and getting out there and sharing our, the light of, of who God is. And we need to share the kingdom, right? We need to be those examples. So be that example, guys, be that example. And I salute you women. I love you. Um, and I thank you, Queen Veronique, you're a mentor to me. And I, and I look at you and I'm like, wow, you know, look at, look at her, but look at all of you. And I'm so excited. You guys don't even know the, the impartation that you put in me and what you guys are doing. And I salute you. I honor you women. And um, I want to be like all of you. <laughs> I want to I want to grow up and be like all of you guys because you are so phenomenal. Um, but I love you guys. And um, wow, just wow. I can't even say anything but wow. You ladies are true royal queens, and you shine. You shine, my love. You shine in that smile of yours is breathtaking. <laughs> <laughs> you're contagious and just be contagious in the world right just be contagious and and share the love of god and if we could just love right i always said i didn't have a whole lot of gifts <laughs> but i know how to love <laughs> you know i can love and and um just love we could change the world with just loving people and um having that true authentic love for them thank you that is so true changing the world with just love Dr. Dene, did you have a final remark before we wrap up? Wow, I'm full. I'm, I'm <laughs> full. I'm running over. <laughs> this has been absolutely awesome. Um, thank you again, Queen Veronique. The vision that you have and what God has placed inside of you, the King has been requiring this of you. And I'm just so grateful that you have received the assignment and that you are running with it so well. Know that what you are doing is changing destinies, you are changing history, and you are impacting the earth. And your selflessness yes. will be greatly rewarded, greatly rewarded. I have to say that to you, because I know sometimes when you labor you don't get a chance to enjoy the fruits of your labor, but know this, you will. And I wanna encourage you to keep doing what you're doing because I believe the King is well pleased. Yes. But to all of the ladies and to the panel here today, you two have just so inspired me to hear your stories. This is my first time hearing some of your stories. so to be able to share this platform and this opportunity and this time with you. It's a great honor for me. Um, I am one that I really believe that ever since the transition of Dr. Miles and Pastor Ruth Monroe, that it has been just in my heart that kingdom minded women come together. Yeah. I, I just, I so desire to see this happen. And so uh, Veronique, for you to do this really, I'm, in, I'm almost trying to hold back these tears because I know the weight of this. 
but I also understand that you see something like all of us here and that it's going to take uniting together as Jesus said, you know, he said, I pray to the Father that they become one, just like you and I are one. And I believe as more and more kingdom women and men and families and children and youth, we all come together. We are going to be able to push back that which is trying to invade our nations, our cities, our regions, our countries, because I believe the kingdom is coming in this hour like never before. And we are a part of bringing the kingdom of God to the earth. This is so exciting. And we get to do it in demonstration. We get to do it in manifestation. We get to uh, allow the king's voice to, to resound in the earth. And this is the message that Jesus came to teach. So for me, um, yes, royalty is very important. Yes, royal etiquette, social as well as uh, governmental. It is so necessary and needed. But I am telling you, we have not yet seen the days of the kingdom's manifestation, his kingdom come and his will being done in the lives of the women, in the lives of men. Women are going to begin to shake off, I believe, all of these worldly and contemptible things and begin to put on their robes of righteousness. They're gonna to begin to put on their garments of praise. They're gonna begin to put on the joy of the Lord, which is gonna be their strength. They're gonna know their worth and value. They're not gonna struggle with this anymore, but they are gonna put off all of this conversation that, um, that the world wants to put on the mandates and how we should walk and how we should look and you know this this hard nature of a woman that's now being portrayed no true women of royalty and elegance and and grace and strength and anointing and power i believe are going to be the women of god who rise up with kingdom knowledge and authority knowing who they are understanding their king, knowing his mandate, and ministering to the masses with their gifts, their talents, their abilities, and going forth and showing the world what the kingdom of God is all about. And guess what? Everybody is pressing. They're pressing to get into this kingdom. Mm -hmm. So I am so thankful again for this opportunity to be a part, just a little part, just a little, little, little piece <laughs> of what you all are doing and what God is doing in this time. So thank you and I love you. And to all of our guests that are watching, we love you and it is a pleasure and an honor to serve the King. Wow, 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 this is beautiful. I don't even know what to say. I just wanted to say thank you to you all, beautiful Queen Annette, beautiful Queen Dene, Beautiful Queen Rene, for blessing our audiences today with such an eloquent queen etiquette, how the queen must actually live and portray the lifestyle of the kingdom of God. We are truly in the season and the timing on the earth where we, the women, will take the baton and begin to train the young generation so that they will be able to walk in their water, uh, uh, garment, righteousness, praise, and authority. Because the enemy is out there to try just to kill the seed. And we women, we will say no. And no. we at Mamlaka Brokers Network, for such a time as this, we say we are all together to fight and push back the darkness and cause the light of God to shine all over the planet Earth in every single nation and in every single household, the people will understand the kingdom of God. For his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is an everlasting one. So on behalf of Mamlaka Brokers Network, it has been my privilege to be your, your host today and to try to facilitate this uh, royal etiquette. So, we may think, you may think that, okay, this is enough. No, we are going to bring you back on, on, on the stage because we realize that you have a lot to share. 
some some people out there have asked questions. We may not have gone through all the questions. Uh, we are going to put our video on YouTube and on Facebook, and we are going to take down all your comment and your question, and we could actually respond to you. If you may have some, you could reach out to any one of these panelists. Doctor Dene is in North Carolina Champion Kingdom Center, correct? And uh, Dr. Anna Trujillo, she is in uh, Colorado, and then she is in the Eleve Elevation Center. And Dr. Rene Johnson is in the Bahamas, the place where God lives. <laughs> so, well, with being that today, you have been so blessed and so higher, uh, uh, um, how you call it, high, receive a lot of revelation, how you ought to be. And on behalf of Mamlaka Broadcast Network, we want to say thank you. Thank you for your contribution, for making your, our audiences out there so wiser, and for making this world that better place to live. Together, we will fight. Together, we will stand. And together, we will push the darkness. Together, we will bring the kingdom of God on the earth we reign. So let us, everyone, do the queen salute. Until I see you again, so be that media evangelist, share, 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 share this broadcast. In yes. Jesus Christ's name, Yeshua Amashia, our King, we bless you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't want to end the meeting before you, so please. <laughs> Thank you.